Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. 2019 is here. Come on, who's glad for the new year and the new beginning? Yes. I want to give a big welcome to all of the locations, Highland and Germantown, Parkway, Jackson, those that are watching online here at Houston Levy. Hey, how about if we all, one more time, put our hands together, thank God for one church, thank God for God's word today. Yeah. Well, let's get our Bibles out. We're going to turn to two passages of Scripture like I like to do sometimes in the New Testament. Go to Matthew chapter 6, hold your place there, flip all the way back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. So I want you to see Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30, powerful passage. Let me give you the context. This is the end of Moses' life. This is his final message, his final sermon. He's done well to lead the people all the way up to the Jordan River. Now they're getting ready to be led by Joshua and go into the promised land. Moses has some parting words that are significant. And this is pretty heavy, pretty heavy speech right here. Listen to verse 15. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. I kind of visualize Moses standing before them saying, I've set before you life, like this, this way is life and prosperity and, and this way, he says, is, is death and destruction, like, like two paths. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase. Come on, anybody want increase in 2019? Anybody believing for increase in 2019? Okay, here we go. Here's the word, increase. Then you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. By the way, this was an actual land, Canaan land, the promised land, had been promised to Abraham hundreds of years before. It was an actual land, it was an actual place. When we read the Old Testament, we can be encouraged because the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament, and I believe the land in the Old Testament represents our destiny or, or, or our promise or the, the place that God has promised us. And so you can take this and you can say, well, if I follow the Lord and if I love him, then I'm going to live and increase and, 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 and God's going to bless me in my place. Here's the alternative, verse 17. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them. In other words, if you get distracted with all of the things that are going on around you, I declare to you this day you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. And then he gives them, he gives them the encouragement. Listen, everybody, choose life. I mean, there's a choice, but it's not really a choice. Choose the right path, make the right decision because then God will breathe on your life and bless you and you'll, you'll see increase. Now choose life so that you, watch this, you and your children. In other words, the decisions you make and the choices you make not only affect you, but they affect the people around you. So choose life. Everybody say choose life so that you and your children may live. Father God, we thank you for your word. May it lift us to a new place, encourage us, strengthen us as we launch this new series. I pray, Father God, that you would stir our hearts as we prepare for the anointing moment at the end of the service. Let our hearts be ready for all that you want to do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Everybody say, choosing my future. I'm going to be talking this month about the power of choosing. The power of choice, I think it's the greatest gift that God has given us, is the power of free will. I'm reading the one-year Bible this year, and you read in the garden that Adam and Eve were created with this ability to choose. They were not pre-programmed to always follow the decrees of God. They had the choice. They had the ability to choose. And some people uh, misunderstand something about God. They they. 
they say, well, since God has a plan for my life and God has a purpose for my life, it must all be preset and, and, and pre-planned and there's no choice for me. But really, the Bible teaches the opposite. The Bible teaches the opposite. Yes, God has a plan, and how many of you are thankful for that? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, God has a purpose and a plan for us, right? And it's a good plan. God has a plan, but you have to choose his plan. You gotta choose. God's not gonna force himself upon you. You're not a puppet. He, he gives you the choice, and it's a great gift. The ability to choose. It's our greatest gift. I believe it's our greatest responsibility. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes this weekend. If you're not taking notes, I want you to jot this down right here. What happens to me in life is not nearly as important as how I respond to what happens to me. I want you to really think about this. This is important. This is gonna make a difference in our 2019. What happens to me, everybody say to me, isn't, isn't nearly as important as how I respond to what happens to me. In other words, it's the significance or the power of my decisions and my choices. I don't know what's gonna come my way in 2019, but I can make a decision what's gonna follow me. What comes at me, I'm not sure. And we can all try to control our circumstances to the best of our ability, but how many of you have realized there's some things you can't control? There's some things that are out of your control and the significant thing is not what comes your way, it's what you do with what comes your way. It's the choices you make and the decisions you make. That's why you can take two people, you can take two people and you can put them in the exact same difficult circumstance, painful circumstance, and one will take that painful circumstance and build something greater and the other will take that painful circumstance and it will break them and they will become bitter. So it's your choice. You're gonna become better or you're gonna become bitter. It's your decision. You can't blame your circumstances. You can't blame what comes at your, your, your life. You, you, you have to make good choices and make good decisions in Jesus' name. So we're gonna be talking about these choices and how important they are. And I'm gonna talk about four choices through the series that I just, and I just, I don't want to be over dramatic here, but these will change your life. These choices and these decisions will change your life. And as I've studied them and thought about them, all of them have the ability to change your life quickly. And I want to take us to Matthew 6, the Sermon on the Mount, one of the greatest passages in Scripture, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 of the book of Matthew, all words in red because this is Jesus' message, the Sermon on the Mount, and he teaches about all kind of things in, in this message, but right in the middle, he devotes all of, these, all of these words to one subject that I think is just so relevant and important for us today. Think about, think about if Jesus is preaching a message that will be recorded at his, as his most important message and so, and so it's only three chapters long. And so if there's a whole passage and 10 verses in the middle of the, of the message devoted to a subject, how many of you think it might be kind of important? And so it's about worry. It's about anxiety. It's verse 25 of chapter six, all the way down, all the way down to, to well, the end, of the, the end of the chapter, the heading in my Bible over verse 25 is do not worry. Everybody say, do not worry. What an important subject. How many of you know this is a national pastime? How many of you have somebody in your life, don't raise your hand, who has the gift of worry? They, they're just real good at it. And they maybe feel like it's their gift to worry about you. And Jesus tells us the opposite, do not worry. Look at verse 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What? What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? 
Look at verse 27, answer this question. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? What's the answer? No. Does no good, and Jesus gives us the solution. The solution is, but seek first. Look at verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All what things? All the things he talked about in this verse. All the things that we pursue. What we're going to eat and what we're going to wear and relationships and opportunities and, and, and all things that are significant, all things that are important. But we're not to seek those things. We're not to go after those things. We're to seek God. And as we seek him, he provides all those things. And so our first choice, write it down, is to choose to seek God first to make a decision, to make a choice right here at the beginning of a brand new year. Come on, 2019, a blank slate, a wide open year ahead. Let's make a decision. We don't know what's gonna happen in February or March or April or May. We have no idea what's gonna happen on the job or or with the economy. We have no idea of the things that we're gonna face as a family, but let's make a decision right now before we face any of it that God's gonna be number one in our life and we're gonna make a choice to seek God first. Let's break it down. The word seek, Jesus uses an interesting word in the Greek language, it means to crave. It means to run after, to go after with all your might. When we seek something, we seek about it, we think about it all the time. When we're seeking something, we're thinking about it all the time. We're talking about it all the time. We're texting our friends, we're Snapchatting, we're getting on Facebook and getting online. And when we seek it, we're running after it. Jesus is telling us instead of running after things, Instead of running after that position, instead of trying to be all that, chase me, run after me, seek me, and I'm going to take care of all these other things that you're worried about, that you're consumed with. By the way, how many of you have realized, and if you've lived long enough, you've realized you're chasing something, and when you get it, it's okay. It's okay. It might fit you good and looks good on you and you might get a few compliments, but it didn't bring the, right everybody? It's all right. But when we seek God, man, there's a fulfillment and a satisfaction. There's something that happens in our life and then he, he provides all those other things too. You know, I heard somebody say a long time ago, And I tried to find out who said it originally. I couldn't find it. But they said, we don't need to seek God's hand. We need to seek God's face. You ever heard that before? Don't seek God's hand. Seek God's face. God's hand represents his provision and all that he provides. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he does provide. He is a provider. But don't seek the provision Seek the God who provides those things. Seek his face. You ever heard that before? Let's seek God's face. God's face represents his favor. It represents his grace. Listen, God's face represents his presence in your life. That's why why the priests, the pastors, the leaders were We're told this is how you are to bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. This is what we're gonna pray over every person when we anoint you with oil and pray a blessing for 2019. We're gonna pray this over your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Come on, how many of you want the grace of God in your life this year, right? The Lord make his face shine on you. The Lord turn, watch this, if you feel like somehow the Lord isn't looking and he doesn't see, we're gonna pray this, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And let me tell you what, a heart at peace better than Whatever car you can have in your garage or whatever clothes you can have hanging in your closet, 
a heart at peace, a home at peace. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you, everybody say it, peace. See, this is what we're seeking. We're seeking God's face, which is his favor, which is his grace, which is an open heaven over our life. God's presence in our heart, God's presence in our home. And then the word first, seek first. Our choice, our choice is to seek God first. First might be the most important word in the verse. Look at it again, Matthew 6, 33. Look at it again. But seek what? First. Seek first him, his kingdom, his righteousness. First because it signifies order. In fact, we could have called the series first. We could have called the series order because if there's one thing you need to know about God, he is a God of order. Order matters. What comes first matters. And he says very clearly in scripture, I want to be number one in your life. I'm a jealous God. He says it about himself. I'm a jealous God. I want first place in your life. And you and me have a decision, an intentional decision with everything we do to elevate God and put him first. We can do it in our relationships. Come on, we can do it with our day and with our time. We can do it with our finances. And anytime we elevate him and put him first, put him at the top, then guess what? He blesses number two and number three and number four and number five. And the challenge is, the challenge is, it's like, it's like a little bit spiritual and intangible. And, 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 and so we, we think, wow, number two is really important. My family, my wife, my, my job, whatever it is, church. We think all those things are so important, and they are, but they're not important than him, number one, numero uno. We've got to put him first. There's something that happens in your life when you seek God first. I don't know how to explain it. You gotta try it. That's what these 21 days are all about. So here's our challenge for the next 21 days. We start on Thursday. Everybody say Thursday. Thursday. We're gonna do everything we know to do to put God first. And I'm gonna give you some real practical suggestions, all right? You ready? There's four of them. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. The first one I'm gonna take a little longer with because it's something that a lot of people misunderstand. Think about these four things. The first one is fast. Everybody say fast. Fast, not like go fast, but literally it means to abstain. So what does it mean to fast? I wanna talk about this because we don't often hear messages on fasting, do we? <laughs> fasting is to deny yourself something significant or something important in order to seek God. That's all it is, is to say no to some appetite in your life in order to put God first. It's an action. It's, a, it's actually a physical action. It's a, it's a physical response to a desire you have to seek God that you're going to deny yourself lunch or dinner. And in its The essence of fasting is about food. Okay, so nowadays people are like, well, I'm gonna fast television, which is great. Might be a great thing to do. But you need to add that onto your decision and commitment to fast food. Food, we read about it in Deuteronomy 30, if you, Moses said, if you succumb to or follow the gods of this world, they will distract. Let me just tell you what, food, it can be a God in our life. Come on, how many of you know, when you sit down to lunch, you're gonna decide what to order based on what you're eating for dinner that night. You're talking about dinner before you even ordered lunch. I mean, I don't need to go through it all, but you know what I mean. And let me tell you what, I look around this room and we're all pretty healthy. I think you can miss a meal or two. I think you can handle it. Now, if you're missing a meal, your mind will tell you you're dying, you're dying. You're dying and you drive by McDonald's and you hear, you hear a voice, come in, come. <laughs> Cheeseburgers and fries, shakes. And you're like, you just feel the pull of the car into the drive-through of McDonald's because you've made a decision to fast. And guess what? It's like you're two hours into the first fast you've ever, 
You're like dying. That ought to show you how powerful it is. And Jesus said, when you fast. Everybody say, when you fast. This is not an if. This is a New Testament Christianity principle. It's not Old Testament. It's not some ancient monastic ritual. This is New Testament. Jesus followers. Jesus said, when you fast. So we're starting Thursday, and I want you to pre-plan and prepare to fast. Let me give you some benefits. Fasting helps break unhealthy dependency. Some of us are addicted to things we don't need to be addicted to, and you're convicted about it, and you want to break that addiction Thursday. Let's go. I'm with you. I'm praying with you. Let's kick it off on Thursday. Watch what God can do in 21 days. Fasting creates extra time to pray. Here's the second thing. This is the essence of fasting. So in other words, you're at the office and everybody's going to lunch and and instead of going to lunch with them and not eating and watching everybody eat and you know, declare how spiritual you are while I'm fasting and our (laughs) church is fasting and the Lord wants me to fast. Instead of doing that, just go in the other, way, uh, in the other direction. Get, get, let them go that way and you go find a quiet place to pray because really that's what fasting is all about. It's about making room to pray and seek God. Fasting does this, it sharpens, here's another thought, it sharpens your spiritual discernment. And I'll tell you this, for me, there's nothing that sharpens my spiritual discernment than fasting. I mean, I can immediately, within the first 24 hours, feel a difference. There's an edge. It's powerful. And then fasting develops spiritual power. This is, this is interesting now. It develops spiritual power. What fasting does is it, it puts you in the presence of God in a significant way. You're seeking God And then there's a sense of God's power moving in your life. You remember the story in Matthew 17, the disciples were praying for this young man and they couldn't couldn't bring him to a place of freedom. Jesus came, laid hands on him, and he was set free immediately. And the disciples came back around and said, "What, what happened? Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, well, this kind, this kind doesn't go out except by prayer and fasting. In other words, there's a level, come on, There's a certain level in your life spiritually that you'll hit when you not only pray, but you but you fast. So get online, research it, start praying, start preparing. You've got till Thursday. What am I gonna do? And here's what I found: if you don't have it set by the beginning of the fast, then chances are you'll keep saying, Well, I'll tomorrow, and I'll and then tomorrow never comes, and you're not getting into the flow of what. Come on, we're seeking God first, everybody. Here's number two, all right? I'm gonna fast. Number two, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna carve out time every day to seek God. Get up a little early if you need to. If you're a morning person, get, you know, stay up a little later. If you're a night, kind of nighttime person, but listen, take those few minutes every day, get on your knees, a quiet place, and pray. Now listen, if you're driving in your car and you turn on some worship music, yes, you can pray on the way to work. But, but what about really carving out some time to go to a place? Jesus talked about your prayer closet, which is a place where you can meet with God. What about doing that every day? Add fasting to it. Watch what God will do. Then we're going to read God's word. Here's number three. Can we, we're going to weave all these together like a, like a cord. We're going we're gonna to put all of them together like, like a like a pot of stew. We're, we're mixing all these ingredients together and watch what God's gonna do in 21 days. Watch what God will do the beginning of this year. These are tangible ways you can put God first. I'm gonna read his word. God's word, the Bible says, is the inspired scriptures. They've been breathed on by the Holy Spirit. They have the opportunity and potential in your life to separate soul from from spirit. In other words, when you read God's word, you're engaging with the Holy Spirit. It's not just a book, everybody. It's not just another book. It's alive. It's living and active, more powerful than a two-edged sword, and you're engaging with the Holy Spirit. And then finally, number four, we're going to pray corporately. We're going to fast. 
We're gonna pray personally. We're gonna read the word and we're gonna pray corporately. We're gonna fast. We're gonna pray personally. We're gonna read God's word and we're gonna pray corporately, meaning we have these corporate prayer services. They start next Saturday. Everybody say Saturday. Right here in every one of our locations, Highland, Germantown, Parkway, Jackson, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., one hour. We're gonna have worship and then we're gonna pray. We're gonna lift our voices to pray. And let me tell you what, thousands of people do this. You're not gonna come and be you know, one of 10 people. There are gonna be hundreds of people at every one of our location. It's gonna be powerful and there's something that happens when we pray together. Jesus said, I'll tell you, if two or three agree on earth concerning anything they ask for, it will be done. Come on, that's the agreement prayer. That's the corporate prayer. When God's church and God's family come together to seek him. How many of you believe God can do some amazing things in our life? Come on.